Hey everybody, welcome back to episode 11 of the Zenith Super Duty Build. In this video, we're going to work on a couple of the ribs and then we are going to fit the aft auxiliary spar and then we'll start working on the rear spars. But first I wanna give a shout out to UL Power. Thank you for sending me this cool banner. I have a UL Power engine in my Zenith Cruiser and the banner looks great in my hangar. All right, I wanna show you rib number one. And rib number one goes right here. This is the only rib that does not have its own flange on the back. It actually gets riveted to this L angle like this. And then this assembly gets riveted to the spar like that. But you have to be careful what order you do this. You can rivet this to the spar first so that it's on the spar. And then you can put this on here like that, but now you can't get to these rivets because this L angle is in the way of the rivet gun and this piece right here is in the way of the rivet gun this way. If you rivet this first and then put this on here, you can still get to all these rivets to rivet to the spar, but then when you put this piece on here, you can't get to the rivets here from this side or this side. So riveting this L angle to the rib first and then riveting it to here won't work, but also riveting it to here first and then riveting it to the rib won't work either. The only way I found that, you know, everything is able to get riveted together is this piece right here, which is held on by four bolts needs to be removed. So I will remove this piece and that'll create an opening for the rivet gun to be able to rivet these together. Removing these two pieces kind of messed up the, the primer they applied to both of those. So what I'll do is I'll use some MEK and wipe this off and then I'll, I'll, re, I'll touch it up again with primer before I bolt it back on. I'm now ready to rivet on this little L angle, but remember there's a rib that goes behind there too, so don't forget this aft rib. Okay, I'm ready to rivet on the nose rib now. You can see that I've just riveted on this L angle, but I wanna point out one more thing about this nose rib that I actually learned on the other wing, is if you look at this from the top, do you see how that rib is sitting really crooked? The reason why, and it took me a while to figure this out on the other one, is the back of this rib is too long. Let me show you. Okay, this might be hard for you to see, but when I put this rib back against here, can you see if I can get this to focus how the holes are not lined up? This rib needs to go back further, but it can't because this edge right here of the rib is hitting the spar. And that's why when you're trying to Clico it on, it's, it's pushing the rib this way. So what I had to do on the other rib is file off the back of this rib and then it'll fit perfectly straight on here so i'll show you the difference you just saw how it sits now crooked like this and then let me show you how it fits after i file it down
All right, now you can see how that rib sits on there perfectly straight now because I have filed the back edge and it's no longer uh, you know, pushing on this rib this way. So there we go, ready to rivet. All right, so that whole thing was pretty painless. This is ready to rivet on now. It's these rivets down here, which will rivet the rib to this L angle. You can see I've reprimed the spar, I've reprimed this piece here, which will get bolted back onto here after these rivets are pulled. Two other things I wanted to mention, when you do rivet on this L angle to the spar, don't forget this rib. I almost forgot to put this rib on here uh, before, I, before I riveted this. And then one other thing is, when you rivet these rivets, this rivet hole right here is shared with this bracket. So don't rivet on, well, just this one, but be, when you rivet these, make sure you have this bracket on the back side of the rib ready to go. So now I will just uh, put all these rivets in and this one will be done. With the ribs now riveted to the spar, the next step in the instruction manual is to start with the auxiliary rear spar, which is this spar right here. It goes right behind the fuel tank, and you can see there's three little ribs on there. So that goes between this rib and that rib. And when you click on this aft spar, you'll notice that it has a hole down here in the bottom corner. This hole is for the fuel tube to go through because the fuel tank will be sitting in there. So I'm not even sure you could put this spar on backwards or upside down, but it, just make sure your hole is over on the bottom corner towards what would be the fuselage. You will see in your plans that each one of these little aft ribs has a sort of a Z channel also riveted to the front of them on the front side of that sub spar. So just like the nose rib with that aft spar, just when you're putting on these little, these three little aft ribs, just don't forget to add that little Z bracket on the front side. just a little reminder to keep track of what you're doing in the manual and put a little check mark or a dot or something next to the steps that you've already completed. Now that everything is clecoed and fit together, it's time to rivet the subspar and the little aft ribs with the Z channels. I've been saving all of these rivet stems so far and I've got quite a collection building up. All of the steps on this particular page are now complete, so I'm putting a little dot just to indicate that they are complete. Now there's quite a few pages in the construction manual for the wings and what I do is when I complete a page and everything's checked off, I just take that page and put it into the back of the book. So the front page is sort of always the page that I'm currently working on. So looking through the plans, we have already, or we've just completed this section right here. 
That's that little auxiliary rib and then these little ribs here. So that is all done. You can see our wing now looks like this drawing. And now it's time for these rear spars. All I'm doing here is just sliding the wing forward on the workbench just so there's room behind those ribs to actually lay out and work on the rear spars. You guys are probably tired of hearing me say this by now, but these edges are fairly sharp and I like to take a file or sandpaper to the edge of it just to smooth them out a little bit. You know, is your airplane going to fall out of the air if you don't do this? No. But I just think it's good building practice to not have these kind of sharp corners like that. Um, just to take some sandpaper and quickly round them off. It really only takes a minute or two to do. And normally I would use sandpaper just to kind of take the burr off the corner of the, the edges. But I, I thought I'd see how it works on this Scotch-Brite wheel. And it works really well. The only problem with doing something like this on a Scotch-Brite wheel is that it will carve in grooves to your wheel. And mine already has a bunch of grooves anyway, so it kind of didn't matter. I just slid this down inside one of the grooves. And it does a perfect job of deburring it. So I just wanted to point out, you know, pretty much with anything I show, there's always more than one way to do it. Now it's also a good time to run your fingers along any of the holes and if they need deburred, go ahead and deburr the holes and you will be ready for assembly. All right, I'm going to save fitting these spars for another video. There are a couple important tips I have for you with these spars, so make sure you check out the next video I have on the wings. So thanks for watching, everybody. I hope you guys are also building something super fun. We'll see you next time.